you can do the timing and while you're there you go oh I might just put that note up a little bit when I'm there and then you can do that and you know you've got the multi-tool so it's all really quick it's just a workflow thing I think it's, it just speeds you up makes you quicker thus makes you good at your job I was in a band growing up and listened to all kinds of music and although I played classically I think I used that as a means in terms of like a way into music and I find I still really like having the kind of terminology to communicate with musicians like especially like string players and cello players and being able to talk in terms of notation. I moved to London, went to work at a great studio um, called The Dairy in Brixton which was really good. Um, kind of made tea there for a year. Um, got to work with some great people, gradually progressed to in-house engineer and then uh, went and flew the coop and just set my own studio up and became completely freelance. It came out of a necessity for me to want to write because at the end of the day if you want to write music people won't pay for you to go and do that in a studio, you have to have your own space and you have to be able to do it on your own steam so I've got this place set up in a, in a way like I can do everything I need to do here, I can write and produce and engineer and mix even. Um, anyone who has their own space can tell you you work much faster um, and that's everything that's that's what you're writing or whether you're you know you're mixing or you're doing anything it just happens quickly you know where your tools are and I've got a limited selection of tools but because of that I can work fast and I can use them effectively. I kind of occupy this slightly weird crossover thing at the moment I'm doing a lot of alternative underground stuff I've been doing the pop thing as well like working with Dappy and Tinchy and people like that which is it's good because they're two very different ways of working obviously um, it's quite vocal intensive working with people like Dappy so uh, it's kind of a different set of skills required I'd say um, but then I write um, I write kind of pop song based pop as well uh, and produce that like I've been working with Gabriella Chilmi recently If I'm doing a vocal session, I have a vocal template that I use. Um, which, with it depends kind of who I'm working with, but with people like Dappy, the the vocal chain in terms of the internal structure in Pro Tools is, is quite complex. There's quite a lot of bussing, quite a lot of routing, quite a lot of plugins. So I kind of have to have that set up so I can duplicate tracks quickly. We don't punch into tracks. If he wants to do another take, we'll duplicate the track or just flick to another track that I've already set up and then continue like that so he can punch in himself whenever he wants and he can hear everything that's going on. We actually, we get into processing fairly early on. Um, we get into automation fairly early on as well because he, in particular, Dappy likes to confirm takes early on. Um, he likes to hear it how it's going to sound, which I think is actually quite kind of a good way of working because you know, a lot of time, you, you, you don't, the last thing you want is to think you've got it or be really happy with it and then suddenly, you know, the EQ changes and you go, oh, I'm, I'm hearing this and I didn't hear this before and it doesn't feel quite right anymore or the timing's changed or there's some kind of, like, you know, delay compensation thing that's going on that wasn't there before and, and you can't, that's the last thing you want. So I think in doing it this way, you kind of know how it's going to sound. It's pretty, everyone's happy with it. It's pretty upfront and, and you go, if you don't like it, we'll do it again. And you, you want to do everything quickly because that's the vibe, isn't it? You don't want to kill the vibe by going, oh, you know, we've got to try and find this. You've got to write this down, got to notate that, you know, score it out. It's kind of just, you don't want to do that, do you? You just want to get on and make a record. What I tend to do is is we comp and, and we're happy with everything and then we'll, we'll duplicate that comp and run a Melodyne version of that comp where everything goes in and then we'll, we'll listen to that and we'll check that we're happy with that and then we might do a comp back from the printed Melodyne back onto another comp with bits you know, some melodyne bits, some not, because because sometimes even if everything's in tune, it's not it's not perfect, is it? It might not be. It might kill the vibe a little bit. But I never print anything until the last minute because, you know, say you want to go into a vocal comp um, and you want one word that might have been in a take two weeks ago, and and you might have to find that and throw that in. If you've if you've comped everything and printed everything and done everything, then it's you have to then try and undo all of that to try and get that to work. So I'd I'd much rather keep it going in a state of flux until everyone goes right. This is it done, bounce it, off it goes to mix. Knowing, knowing that I have Melodyne in my arsenal, I wouldn't go crazy on doing crazy edits in Pro Tools that might kind of ruin the flow or, or you might, might make noticeable edits. And also if you're tuning vocals and things like that, it lets you, it lets you, you know, you might, you might want to Melodyne something and then you might go, oh actually we want that little bit sharper like later on but you don't want to have to go back back into Melodyne so you just leave the Melodyne running and Melodyne kind of just works it hardly uses any resources so you can leave it going on a lot of tracks 
um, once you've kind of got past the comping stage and you can kind of leave that there for a bit and then just live with it a bit and see if you're still happy with it in a day's time or two days time and then maybe go and make some changes or not you know I do everything manually so you might move a little bit up you know you might sharpen something up or flatten something off but you're not putting it perfectly in tune you're just going oh, I want a little bit more sharp or a little bit more flat and it's quite an organic thing to be able to just grab the note and just move it up just a little bit until it feels good and then same thing with the timing I use Melodyne a lot for for timing BVs um, because I used to just move everything around in Pro Tools but it kind of it's more organic to do it in Melodyne because sometimes visually it might look good on the screen but actually it's not, it doesn't sound quite right. And so sometimes in Melodyne you might just want to drag like one syllable a tiny little bit that way um, but not have to do a dodgy, a dodgy crossfade or a dodgy edit to make it work. But you might just move that tiny little bit and suddenly it just feels good and it, everything locks together. If I've got a great take that's really vibey and it's, you know, and it's killing it for me, then I would, I would much rather deal with a tiny little bit of a pitch issue than would be about getting perfect pitch but then at the expense of vibe and timing and and kind of punch as well. The more takes that you do, they always lack punch, which is like an immeasurable quantity, shall we say. But you know, the first few takes always sound great. They always sound really good. There's a lot of energy, and and it's and it's kind of the way that and and as they do more takes, everything becomes a little cleaner, a little more quantized, a little more in tune, maybe. But you lack that original kind of oomph that you have when you first get in the booth. And it's good to be able to comp between those takes. Sometimes you can take a few early takes and go to some later takes. But with Melodyne. I could use the early takes because they are the great takes and just fix the old note, the odd the odd tuning thing. And and that's a much better kind of result, I think. Um, but again, it is about getting the good takes still. So it's not an excuse to, to work with subpar material. It's just a way of making something that was already good better. We use a lot of real instruments. Like I use, um, I use a lot of glockenspiels, or I use a lot of Juno. Just vibe, when I, when I play, say if I'm putting a synth part down, I'll just run the length of the track a few times and just noodle about and get a cool sound and put some stuff down. There might be the odd mistake that I make, or there might be something that I put down that I then want to change the chord of later, and now with Melodon I can just go straight in and do that. But I kind of use it creatively in a way, in that you might want to take a note out, or you might want to add, just, you know, make something that was major minor, just knock it down, a semitone. You know, on the third, and it's really easy to do that now. But also, if you're working with something like, um, and I might put like a Mellotron part down or something, or a piano part, and and the artist might be doing it, and I'm listening in the in the control room, going, oh, that sounds really good. I really like that. Wish that note did this, or I wish this went there, or oh, I wish they'd played that chord there. But it was a one take thing. The moment's gone. You can then go back in, chop it up, use that bit, and just correct that note down. Just put that down a little bit. So you're kind of writing. You're using it as a writing tool in a, in a sense, and it's exciting because they'll come through and go, oh, I was really liking that, and I was like, yeah, yeah, listen to this. Come and listen to this. And I'll just do this, and they'll go, they go, yeah, yeah, that's great. Where can we go with this? And then and suddenly you're kind of using it in in a way to write chords. You're using it to rearrange the track as you go and I, I'm quite into that I'm quite into that kind of that flexibility and that kind of vibe and it's you know and I, it excites me talking about it and and that's how that's how I feel when we're putting stuff like that down so Melodyne lets you go in sort that out bosh that down away you go you've got an amazing sound <laughs>